here, there's a lot of interesting different applications for snorkel. Um, certain, you know, some EMR, a lot of PubMed um, and literature searches. Um, and I think conversations in text-based social media types of information. So a lot of rich sources for us to mine and really change the way that biomedicine is being done. So I want to um, tell you a little bit more about um, the Mobile Life Center, which is the group that is hosting this workshop. We're part of the NIH Big Data to Knowledge Centers. How many of you have heard of the BD2K effort? About half of you. Great. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this effort. So NIH, a couple years ago, realized there's a lot of data being collected, and it's just kind of sitting there. And it's a rich date, uh, source of information that we're not tapping into. And so they funded um, these 12 centers to kind of seed and build infrastructure to help the whole community leverage all this information. Um, so the Mobilized Center is up here, and our focus is to really overcome data science challenges um, to improve human movement across a wide range of conditions that limit mobility. So talking about osteoarthritis, stroke, uh, running injuries, that whole gamut. However, the tools that we create, as you can see, have applicability across many, many different domains. Give you a little bit of a sense of some of the areas specifically that we're working on within the center. So one area is we're doing, um, looking at treatment planning for children with cerebral palsy. This is a brain um, injury that happens when they're born that leads to a number of uh, uh, changes, including uh, limitations in mobility. And so we're looking at how can you combine biomechanical modeling along with data-driven uh, analyses to improve the surgical um, outcomes of these children. The other area that we're working on is how can we motivate physical activity at a global scale? So we all know exercise is important. How do we get people to actually start moving more? Um, we're leveraging a lot of the data that comes from wearables, so another huge source of information that isn't really being tapped into. And some of you may have heard about, um, uh, we had a paper in Nature that was just published looking at uh, 700,000 700, people and their data of walking over monitor 24-7. Um, and so we were able to look at 100 or so different countries and how their physical activity levels varied and what that said about obesity, about environmental factors, about social factors, and how all of that influences and motivates physical activity. And we're also evaluating proactively um, how you can change and build these behavioral interventions to increase that level of physical activity. The last area where we're doing some work is in integrating multimodal data to improve rehabilitation. So looking at imaging data, data from physical um, activity trackers, from your traditional gait uh, workup that you have in the hospital, as well as electronic medical records, pulling all that information together to say how can we better diagnose, better treat conditions like osteoarthritis or running injuries or stroke. So in addition to the research arm, we also have a mission to grow the biomedical data science community. Um, so different ways we do that, we have a magazine that we put out. This is free for anyone in the US to subscribe to. And there are copies in the back, so if you're interested, our recent issue is on um, the BD2K centers and all the work that they've done. And there's actually a whole article in here on um, text mining and the efforts across all the different centers on text mining that you may find useful to read more about snorkel as well as some of the other tools being developed within the BD2K network. Um, we have a Women in Data Science Conference, and this is actually an event that's hosted here at Stanford, but there are 70 or 80 other regional events that happen throughout the world. Really inspirational and powerful uh, technical conference. Um, welcome you to check that out. We have simtk.org where we host software and data resources for people to share their work and also for people, other people to access and build upon the work that others have already done. 
And then we have um, several different resources, tools that we build and develop and disseminate. So you'll hear more about snorkel today, a lot about snorkel today. We also have OpenSim, which is for musculoskeletal modeling and simulations, and SNAP, which comes from Yuri Leskovich's group um, over here in the computer science department for network analysis and um, graph mining. So that's just a quick overview of what the center is about. For today, we have um, two days to really dive into snorkel, and there are two main goals. The first day today is really focused on learning to actually use Snorkel to go through that whole pipeline so you can automatically generate label training data and um, generate these predictive models that are based on those training data sets. So we've really helped you streamline it because our goal is for you to come away and know that kind of nitty gritty, here are the steps you do. But to jump from that to actually using it for your own research is another step. And so day two, we're really focused on getting you, jumping you from kind of the mechanistic, how do I do this, to how do I then start thinking about how do I use this tool within my own research to answer my own questions. And so day two is really learning about how do you actually design the schema and set up a plan to use Snorkel, maybe some of the nitty gritty of how then do you, what are the other resources that you might want to tap into to build and um, develop your training sets. Um, and we kind of go through all of that on day two. You all have the agenda. If you didn't, there are copies in the back. Um, you'll notice that we have a lot of hands-on opportunity. The main goal is really on these ideas of labeling functions, which uh, Stephen and Jason will talk to you about, and that's kind of the heart of a snorkel. At the end of the day, we'll give you an introduction to schemas, so kind of get your mind started to think about the plan that you're gonna develop on the next day for your own research. And then we'll have a reception where we can all kind of unwind a little, because it's a pretty intensive day of uh, processing and taking in new information. So it's not all going to be work. We've got a little element of fun here, a little competition going on. So on day one, to really incentivize you guys to write some good labeling functions for the example that we'll be working on, we're offering some Amazon gift cards, so first, second, and third place. And Jason will go over kind of what is the criteria for qualifying for first place, but keep that in mind as you're listening to the lectures and going through the exercises. And then day two, we have a competition where we're going to have you guys vote on who um, has the best schema and evaluation plan. So not only will you be writing your own, you'll actually be critiquing each other's. And so that'll give you a chance to think more about how, what makes a good schema and good evaluation plan. And we'll be offering $10 Starbucks coffee gift cards. Not quite as exciting as this, but I think just a little element of fun there. So lastly, there's a lot of work that goes into putting together these workshops. We've done a number of dry runs, a lot of iterations of this uh, tutorial. And so I really want to thank Jason, who's taken the lead on this, and with a lot of help from Stephen and Alex, who's not here yet. Um, so I want to thank you guys for all the work you've put into this. And then Diane and Sharon, who will help kind of keep the day running smoothly and keep you guys all nourished and caffeinated.